everyone, it's Marissa from BumblebeeApothecary.com and today I'm going to bring you along in another What We Eat in a Day video. So today we are having a pretty typical breakfast. This is what we pretty much always have when my husband is home. He is in charge of cooking breakfast whenever he is home during that time, weekends, days off from work, things like that. And so he is making scrambled eggs and bacon. And as you can see, we are overloaded with eggs right now. It's a really nice problem to have. Our new batch of laying hens has started really laying a lot. And so we officially do not have to rely on the store at all for eggs anymore. So that's a really nice place to be in. So we're just doing scrambled eggs. We just keep that really simple. Add a little salt. I don't think he usually adds pepper. I sometimes do when I make them, but for sure some salt. Whip them up, cook them in baking grease and butter in our cast iron skillet. And then along with the eggs, we are having some bacon. So we like to cook that in the oven. We have these stainless steel pans that we put it in. And we just do that in the oven at 400 degrees Fahrenheit for 17 minutes usually works well for the bacon. Have that going while the eggs are finishing up. And then also for our fermented food for this meal, we are having some kefir alongside to drink, just plain. I've been trying to really make sure to not let it go too long because when it over ferments it's really strong and then it's not the nicest tasting when you have it plain but if you let it go for just the right amount of time to where it's nice and thick and done but not over fermented it's it's nice it's very nice to drink and we all like it plain that way so we're just having cups of kefir alongside our bacon and eggs for lunch today i'm doing uh, oftentimes we will do leftovers for lunch we do that a lot but sometimes when we don't have enough leftovers or you know we just don't have them then we'll do something else like today i'm doing these sa sandwiches so this is sourdough sprouted spelt bread i have made this myself at different times right now i've usually been buying it from organic bread of heaven i'll get three loaves a month and then just kind of make those last the month so to make these, I'm just buttering each side of the bread. I'm slicing some of our raw white cheddar cheese, and then I'm adding a little bit of sauerkraut onto each slice of cheese. So it's going to be grilled cheese with the sauerkraut. If we have leftover meat, like any kind of roast or ham, that's really nice to add to these as well. But even if it's just cheese and sauerkraut like it is today, then it's re still really tasty. The sauerkraut just adds a nice tang like another dimension of flavor to otherwise it would just be grilled cheese. And then it's also fermented food. And I know that it is being heated a bit, although I feel like since it's inside the sandwich, it doesn't get super hot. So it probably still preserves some of the live bacteria. Even if it didn't, it's still beneficial to have cooked fermented food as well. So just slice another piece of bread and butter that to go on. And I let those cook on one side until it's nice and golden brown and then flip them over and the cheese is nice and melted and the other side is golden brown. Then I take them off and serve them. And then a good side to go with these are some carrot sticks. This is just, I oftentimes have carrots on hand because I use them in so many different things. Sometimes we'll do cucumbers when I have them, but carrots are a really common thing and everybody likes them. So I'm just slicing those into some sticks and then we'll serve those alongside these sandwiches when they are ready. And then for dinner, I am doing some chicken soup. So we recently went ahead and processed our old laying hens. We had 11 of them left and they were just done. They were not laying very consistently at all. They were eating a lot and so it just wasn't worth to keep them around when our new batch is laying so well. So you may have seen in a recent video when we processed those. And so that's what we're doing for dinner tonight is just cooking up one of those. So I'm just making a basic chicken soup or chicken meat stock with the whole chicken. Now these, they the meat is not the greatest on there. There's not a lot of meat. It's kind of tough, but 
they make really rich, flavorful broth. So I always go for the longer cooking time, at least three hours for these just because they are so tough. And I add my normal things that I always add to chicken soup, and that is onions, carrots, celery, some garlic, some pepper, and some mineral salt to taste, filtered water to cover everything, and just adding all of that, bringing the pot up to a boil. When it comes to a boil, adding a lid, turning it down to a simmer, and then letting that cook for three hours. And then towards the end of the cook time, here's what it looks like. It's cooked down. You can see that really rich yellow fat from these birds that are three years old, been out on grass, and just really flavorful. Not the nicest looking cooked chicken for sure. And I add the feet and the heads, or just the head from each individual one too, because those add good nutrients to the broth as well. So I hope that you enjoyed coming along and seeing what we're eating in a day. Be sure and check out that description box for links to free eBooks and other goodies, as well as places that I like to buy groceries and good quality food. If you did like this video, give it a thumbs up, share it with anybody else who you think would find it interesting or helpful. And if you're new to my channel, please hit that subscribe button. I get out new videos every week on nourishing recipes and natural living. Thanks so much for watching. See you next time. Bye.